Fetch Lab had previously introduced and tested the charging compatibility of the Move Speed 140 w PD 3.1 charger. It doesn't have any compatibility issues. The box adopts a sliver glassy design, and the specs info are printed on the back. We will talk about it later. Remove the box, you can see the charger and the dual USB C cable. The cable has the same color as the charger. The connectors have a double layer design. The outer layer is made of transparent material, and the inner layer is made of green PC. Charger Lab Power ZCAM 003C shows that it can support 50V, 5V, 240W, and has an e-micro chip. It can also support USB 2.0. Move to the charger itself, the words move speed and 140W are printed on the front of it. It has a rounded case and a matte surface. Here are four output ports. The output panel shows the maximum output power of each port. And there are the foldable prongs. The specs info are also printed here. Model is YSFCG107-140. It has support input of 100 to 240 watts, 50 or 60 hertz, 2.0 amp. The highest charging power of USB-C1 to USB-A is 140 watts, 100 watts, 20 watts, 20 and 2.5 watts, respectively. And the total charging power can reach 140 watts. The size of it is about 74 by 31 by 74 mm. So the power density is about 0.82 watts per cubic centimeter. And the weight about 311 grams. Compared with the Apple 140W charger, it is smaller. Charger Lab Power ZKM 003C shows that the USB-C1 port can support PD 3.1 and DCP charging protocols. And it has 6 phase PDOs of 5V, 9V, 12V, 15V, 3A, and 20V, 28V, 5A. The USB-C2 can support FCP, ICP, EFC, QC 3.0, SFCP, MTK, PD 3.0, QC 4+, DCP, Apple 2.4A, and TPS charging protocols. And it has 5 fixed PDOs of 5V, 9V, 12V, 15V, 3A, 20V, 5A, and a set of PPS. The protocols supported by USB-C3 are the same as those supported by USB-C2. And it has 3 fixed PDOs of 5V, 3A, 9V, 2.22A, and 12V, 1.67A. The USB-C8 can support FCP, SCP, AFC, QC 3.0, SFCP, MTK, DCP, Samsung 2A, and Apple 2.4A protocols. Now let's take a look at its charging compatibility. The highest charging power of USB-C1 is the 16-inch MacBook Pro M1 Max when charged with MagSafe 3 cable. The power can be up to about 130 watts. The charging power of devices remains in the ranges of 10 watts, 18 watts, 30 watts, 65 watts, and 100 watts. Move to the USB-C2. Devices that support QC or PPS can get a higher charging power such as IQ12 Pro. The charging power of devices remains in the ranges of 15 volts, 27 volts, 30 volts, 65 volts, and 100 volts. Devices that support PD can get a higher charging power with USB-C3. The charging power of devices remains in the ranges of 10 watts, 15 watts, and 20 watts. Move to the USB-A. Devices that support SCP charging protocol can get a higher charging power. The charging power of devices remains in the range of 9 to 20 watts. Next, we'll test the power during multiple charging. When using the USB-C1 and USB-C2 to charge two laptops, the power of the two ports can be maintained above 60 watts. After adding the USB-A to charge your phone, the power of USB-C1 remains the same. The combined power of USB-C2 and USB-A is about 60 watts, and total output is about 120 watts. When using all the ports to charge two laptops and two phones, the power of USB-C1 is also about 60 watts. And the total output is about 120 watts, which is in line with the nominal specification. Next, we use it to fully charge the 16-inch MacBook Pro M1 Max. The voltage is always around 28 volts. The charging curve can be divided into five parts. In the first part, the peak power stayed at 114 watts for the first 21 minutes. Then, the power gradually drops to 96 watts, 65 watts, and 42 watts in turn. The final part begins at 1 hour and 4 minutes, and the power slowly drops to almost zero. It takes 2 hours and 3 minutes to be fully charged. It can charge the MacBook Pro to 50% in 28 minutes, and it can reach 80% in 52 minutes, 100% in 2 hours and 3 minutes. Next, we'll use it to fully charge the iPhone 15 Plus. The voltage stays at 9 volts first. The charging curve can be divided into 4 parts. In the first part, the peak power stayed at 26 watts for the first 25 minutes. Then, the power gradually drops to 22 watts and 15 watts in turn. The final part begins at 43 minutes, and the power slowly drops to almost zero. At about 50 minutes, the voltage drops from 9 volts to 5 volts. It takes 2 hours and 1 minute to be fully charged. 
it can charge the iPhone 15 Plus to 50% in 26 minutes and 80% in 53 minutes, and it reaches 100% in 2 hours and 1 minute. Then let's take a look at its standby power test. The power consumption at 220 volts 15 hertz is 0.27 watts and 0.02 watts at 110 volts 60 hertz, which is about 2.37 and 1.75 kilowatts hour in one year, respectively. So you do not need to worry about the waste of the electricity. Next is the conversion efficiency test. The conversion efficiency was from 84.13% to 93.14% at 220 volts 50 hertz. And the conversion efficiency was from 83.85% to 91.29% at 110 volts 60 hertz. The charger achieves a conversion efficiency of up to 93.14%, which is at an excellent level among similar devices. Now, let's do the ripple test. Firstly, let's check out its ripple result load. When the output is 9V 0A, the lowest ripple is around 296mV peak to peak. When the output is 20V 0A, the highest ripple is around 96mV peak to peak. Then, move to the ripple test when loaded. When the output is 20V 5A, the highest ripple is 116mV peak to peak. When the output is 12V 3A, the lowest ripple is 31.2mV peak to peak. Overall, the performance isn't good enough, but it's not higher than 200 milliwatts peak to peak either. We put the charger into a 25 degree Celsius thermal tank throughout the temperature test, and record the highest temperature on the front and back after charging at 28 volts 5 amp for an hour. After one hour of charging, the maximum temperature on the front is 71.5 degree Celsius, and the back is 70.4 degree Celsius. Creating a bar chart to represent the data. It is evident that this charger reaches a maximum temperature of 71.5 degrees Celsius. If you touch it at this time, you will feel hot. Well, that will be all the tests for this charger. There are no charging compatibility issues, and it can distribute the power automatically. Its charging speed is almost the same as the Apple 140 watts charger, but it has a smaller size. Both standby power consumption and conversion efficiency are at mainstream levels. However, the result of the ripple test is unstable. You will feel hot to touch after charging for an hour, but as a desktop charger, you won't move it frequently, so temperature isn't a big issue. It can meet the fast charging needs of phones, tablets, and laptops, so if you have many devices, it will be a good choice. Okay, that's all for today's video. Please drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to us. See you next time. Bye!